Hi, this is Andrew Smith, instructor at Ferris State University and runner of artbysmitty.com. Today we're going to cover retopologization inside of 3D Studio Max. That being said, let's take a look at our mesh. Uh, here we're working with a nice high poly helmet. Uh, I'm actually going to select this visor and hide that so we can kind of focus in on everything else. Um, usually when you have a high poly mesh or anything you want it to all be kind of one object depending on what you're working on uh, but for the sake of this tutorial uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of attach all of these elements so I'm gonna select this helmet and put in suffix at the end of it saying helmet underscore HP for high poly then I'll come over here hit the attach button but I'll do attach list I'll select everything in my scene attach it so it's all one object Again, this depends what you want to retopologize. Uh, whatever piece you want to retopologize, that's the piece that you need as an object. So, in this case, we want to retopologize this whole helmet. Um, so, first thing I usually do, we need a high poly mesh, and then we also need, we could go in here and we create a plane or some type of primitive. I usually start, start with just a plane. Uh, but in this case, what I'll do is um, I'll actually go into sub object mode, hit 4 for polygon mode and I will select a polygon up here somewhere on the helmet that I think I could start using for creating a retopologized mesh. Once I have a face selected I'm just going to hold shift and move it out slightly. There we go, we'll wait for Max to stop chugging. Uh, I'm going to call this one helmet underscore LP for low poly. I will get out of subobject mode since that seems to be destroying my computer right now for whatever reason. Uh, and notice now I have a new object here that we're going to start to use for our low poly. And what's nice is the pivot point's still the same as what the helmet was since we just pulled this polygonal face right off of it. I'm going to hit uh, 5 or, or 4 and I'm going to take this guy and uh, you know I'm going to scale him up and I'm just going to scale them up to about the size I want my topology to, to be at. So let's say that looks like a nice size. Um, I'm going to hit F for front and just kind of look at this and make sure that it's oriented correctly. Since it did come from a single polygon and not this entire space, we want to line this up as best we can. It's not really terribly important that it's perfect. Um, I could even grab one or select one to hit my edges and start moving these so that they're nice, we get a nice polygonal shape here. Uh, and that works for me. I'm going to get out of ortho view, hit P for perspective. And just to help me retopologize this, I'm actually going to come in here, uh, hit M for material and apply. I'm going to create a new, I call this material topo, and I'm going to make it some crazy color like fuchsia. And we're just going to apply that to our new object. Uh, and this is going to really help me see where I'm drawing. So we'll close that out. Um, we have to have our low poly plane here selected, our low poly object. And we're going to come up here and take advantage of our graphite modeling tools. We're going to hit f uh, freeform and we're going to click on the poly draw icon, except I'm actually just going to tear it off. And this is really nice, kind of uh, doing what Maya does where I can tear menus off. It makes my life much easier. Uh, and so the first thing we need to do is right now, if we look at this pull down, and I'll move this over so you can see what it's saying. Now it says draw on grid. You know, it'd be nice if I could hold control like I do in ZBrush to get these menus to pop up because it's kind of annoying having it pop up all the time. Um, but I don't want to draw on the grid. I want to draw on a surface. So I'll click the down arrow, draw on surface, and then the pick option becomes available. Click pick, and then we want to select our high poly mesh. Notice the name comes in the menu here. At this point, uh, pretty much the only tool I use is this step build tool. That gives you this nice long paragraph explanation of what it does. Again, I should only see that if if I really want to. But anyways, I'll click it. And what that's going to allow me to do is to start drawing vertices. And what I'm doing is I'm drawing vertices for my low poly mesh. And, but they're snapping to the surface of that high poly helmet that we told. Now if I hold the shift key and just basically click and drag, it's going to start creating more surfaces for me, uh, or no more polygons, more geometry. So at this point, we can see those vertices are sticking directly on there. So 
the, the planes are actually going inside the helmet a little bit. And so it's really nice. We have this offset amount, and I usually set this to like 0.2. That usually works pretty good. So now when I draw these vert vertices, um, it's going to draw them 0.2 units offset of the surface. So I'm just going to continue to draw these around. And again, I'll start over here and just hold shift and start clicking and dragging. Uh, it's really, really easy to start making geometry um, and retopologizing something in Max now. I used to use, I, I mean, I still have Topo Gun, but um, this process to me is almost easier than using Topo Gun. And that's a, you know, it's a hundred dollar program. And I've always been a big supporter of Topo Gun, uh, but this is a very, very nice tool that Autodesk implemented, and we can take advantage of it. Now, the beautiful thing about this tool is that right now I'm I'm in this step build mode. If I right click, it brings me out of it. And at any point, I could come in here, select a vertice, start moving it around. And doing whatever other function I would normally do to this edible poly. Turbo smooth it, whatever, add more edges. I could come in here, Altar, connect, and start connecting edges if I'd needed to. Um, that's really, really nice. So let's go back into step mode. I want to show you a few more things. Um, I'm going to continue to draw some geometry going up the side of the helmet this way. Notice how I'm kind of keeping my topology somewhat the same size. Like every polygon is kind of the same size. Uh, if I wanted to move them, I could hold Control Shift and Alt. It's kind of a funky combination here. Um, but if I hold Control Shift and Alt, it'll allow me to select the vertice and s to start to move it along the surface of my object. And I'm pulling these back out because remember we changed our offset to 0.2, so it's actually sticking them out a little bit, making this easier for us to use. And I'm just going to come in here and start straightening some of these vertices out and basically creating a uh, topology that I'd like to be perfect. You know, spacing these polygons out correctly. There we are. And this guy needs to come out a little bit. And okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is let's say I came in here and accidentally created some kind of weird shape. Um, I can hold Alt and click on a vert and it will delete it. Same thing here, eventually. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so that's kind of cool. And then I, again, I can hold Control Shift Alt to to move this around. Or if I ended up, you know, I've never seen Max draw something I haven't wanted it to draw. Uh, but in any case, if it did create something I didn't want it to do, I could just simply right click, get out of that surface mode, and come in here and just hit four for polygon mode, delete something, come back here into my oh, when the menu one pops up, but Never mind. Uh, I could come back here and just finish drawing those those out and just right click to, to stop. So very quickly and easily I'm generating a low polygon mesh over the top of this. And you might say, yeah, why don't you just delete edges around here to get your low poly? Well, it, it starts to get a little confusing when we want to come down underneath here. So I could uh, again come back in, into this mode and I could start drawing more edges. And all of a sudden we're starting, and of course again I can move these vertices wherever I want. Um, maybe this needs to come out to here. And say I wanted to edge loop in there, just right click, hit 2, connect them, come back into my mode, and I can just hold Control and Alt and it'll snap these to the surface. So a very, very useful tool for getting a nice low poly mesh. Again, we're just holding shift and clicking and dragging in areas that we want. And it's doing an amazing job of creating this topology for me. So that's pretty much how we create or how we retopologize tools, uh, meshes inside of 3D Studio Max. Uh, thanks for watching.